Welcome to Raising Happy and Thriving Gifted Kids, a daily podcast where you get relatable stories, interesting lessons and practical tips to help your kids thrive and be happy while enjoying your own life even more. Yesterday I was talking with one of the members of my management team and you know she's managing a bunch of people and she's working for me and she's very young, very ambitious and we came to talking about like how to perform at the highest level on how to you know use what you've got but one of the things that we started talking about is the ability to do more work than most people can do and this is something you probably can relate to you know your kids are smart but you're probably smart so you know if you look at the average person around you you're probably going to get more done in a week but if you're you know like me and like that colleague I've got then there's you know you've got different settings as well different levels of intensity you can operate at so i was reflecting that i actually have the ability that like in my eight hours usually i'll do more than most people do like in a week but even those eight hours if i really push myself and i'm really focused like crazy and and like do all these things that i know how to do to get myself in maximum productivity i can in about two or three hours do the work of one day The thing is that I actually burn through the same amount of energy I would do in a day. It's like if you can run a marathon in one third of the time that most people can run a marathon or walk a marathon, that doesn't mean that you should do three in a day. And a a good metaphor I learned from this is somebody who talked about compression time and decompression time. This usually is talked about with highly sensitive people or like some variation of it. But what you talk about is that when you are in an environment that is taxing you, and that's you know either because you're very intensely focusing, but for some people it's also when they're in an environment with a lot of stimuli that makes the environment intense, that is creating compression. Like that's putting pressure on you and that's making you know the space that you have for yourself get smaller and smaller. So you're kind of compressed like a sponge that you squeeze. Like this sponge has a natural amount of space it needs to take. But when you squeeze it and you squeeze it and you squeeze it, it becomes smaller and smaller. It's still the entire sponge, but it's taking up less space. And what happens, you know, is that it's not actually a healthy place to be in for neither a sponge, but also not for you as a human being to be compressed all the time. So for compression time, you need to offset that with decompression time. With decompression time, a place where you can just be, you know, there's no solution for a sponge that you squeeze to push it into being bigger. Like you don't pull on the sides to make it bigger. You simply let go, you put it in a place where it's got the space to get back to its original shape and you wait. And the same thing goes for, you know, somebody who can live in and with intensity, You know, they get compressed because of the intensity and they get to a smaller, smaller space. And the solution is not to pull them apart. The solution is not to like yoga really hard until you're doing better. But the solution is just creating space to be. And the more time you live in intensity, the more time you need space to be. So this is one of the things that we really, really learned When um, I was doing a sabbatical for six months and we were traveling around the U.S. with my family, including my thrice exceptional daughter and the other daughter that has like a lot of educational needs and anger issues and like gets really frustrated. And we were traveling around the U.S. in an RV for six weeks and it was a big ass RV, but it was that was not a comfortable position because what we were getting compressed being with each other. Like, I actually need alone time from time to time to decompress, to get space, you know, to be who I am. And while we were in the RV, that was actually very hard to attain. So we did create some space, withdraw ourselves. And then when we, you know, came to the next location where we handed in the RV and we got an Airbnb and we kind of knew this would happen. So we'd gotten actually a pretty big RV, uh, a big Airbnb with, with a lot of room. So everybody had their own room and they actually, the kids called it their withdrawing room. They needed a room that they could withdraw in. And like for the first two or three days, like everybody retreated basically into their own room, reading books, doing their own thing, just decompressing 
and refinding their original size. So what is your balance currently like? What is your balance between compression and decompression? When are you living in a with intensity and when are you creating the space just to be and just to settle? And how does that work for your kid? You know, what is the difference between compression time and decompression time? And this is different for everybody. Some people, I can live for a long time with, you know, intensity and compression. And then, you know, I like my decompression time combined. Like I'd rather go off for like four or five days and decompress and then I can go for another couple of months. Uh, Some people just need like a set, you know, hour in every day or a day every week. But how does that work for you? What's the balance between compression and decompression? How do you manage that? And how does it work for your kid? What's the balance between compression and decompression? And how do you manage that? I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this matter. If you liked this episode of Raising Happy and Thriving Kids, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast software. And if you want to dive deeply into all the things you can do to help your kids thrive, Be happier while making your own life more enjoyable. Go to smartparentingsecrets.com where you can get free additional training. Hope you enjoyed this episode and as always, bring out the best in yourself and each other.